In this video, we'll talk about the process of converting expressions back to x once you're done with a trigonometric substitution problem. So when you do a trig sub, you put theta in your integral, you solve it all out, you get the answer in terms of theta, but you have to go back to x. And the way you always want to do that is using a triangle. Basically, you want to draw a triangle that relates theta to x based on what your trig sub was in the first place. You'll then need to solve for the last side of the triangle. And then once you have all three sides, it's really easy to figure out what any trig function is in terms of x. You can just read it right off, right off the triangle, right? If it's sine, you look opposite over hypotenuse and you get what the expression should look like. And an important point here to make sure you're on the right track, the expression that you had in your original integral should always show up in your triangle. So the thing that you were trying to sort of simplify to get rid of a square root, that expression should always be the third side of your triangle. Right? And you should always see that and it should come up in your answer as well because that sort of means you're solving the right problem. Let's do an example of this and I'll point out what I mean by all these things as we go. So we want to evaluate the integral of dx over x squared plus 49 to the 3 halves. So here we see x squared plus a squared. So that's telling me to use a tangent substitution for this problem. So I should set x to be 7 tangent of theta, and then dx is going to be 7 secant squared theta d theta. And then I can make my substitution. So on top, 7 secant squared theta d theta. On the bottom, I get 49 tangent squared theta plus 49 to the 3 halves. This part here becomes a 49 secant squared theta. And so I will end up with a 7 secant squared theta on top, a 49 to the 3 halves times secant cubed theta on the bottom. 49 to the 3 halves is just 7 cubed. A 7 on top gives me a 1 over 49 on the bottom. So 1 over 49 integral secant squared over secant cubed is again cosine. The 1 over 49 sine theta plus c. And I want to convert that back to x, so we draw the triangle. And now our triangle must fit our trig sub from before, which said that x was 7 tangent theta. And the way you want to think about this is tangent of theta is then x over 7. And then since tangent is opposite over adjacent, I can write the opposite side as x and the adjacent side as 7, and that works totally fine. I can then find the last side here, square root of x squared plus 49. And like I mentioned before, x squared plus 49 was exactly what I was trying to simplify here. So the fact that x squared plus 49 shows up as the third side is not a coincidence. It's always going to be the case based on how you pick this trig substitution. If it doesn't show up, you probably did something wrong somewhere along the process. But it showed back up here as it should. And now I can finish my answer. So this means I actually get 1 over 49 sine of theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse, x over root x squared plus 49 plus c. So that's how the process works for converting expressions back from theta into x's when you're done with a trig sub problem. It's important to make sure you do this because your original integral was in terms of x, your answer should also be in terms of x. This theta doesn't really have much meaning unless you convert it back to x first. And we also want to get it to an expression of x that is not just inverse trig function because that's also less useful. It's much more useful to have algebraic expressions in terms of x and not something like 1 over 49 sine of tangent inverse of x over 7 plus c. While that is true, it's not really useful. We want something that does not have trig functions in it by the time we're done in order to get an expression that we could do something with later on. Right? This inverse tangent here doesn't help me if I want to add this something else or figure out what's going on with this function later. I want an expression that's only in terms of x if I want to do stuff with it later. So we need this process to make sure we get good expressions for these antiderivatives in ways that we can actually do things with them in other problems and getting it into a form we can actually use when we're done with solving a trig sub integral problem.